Good morning. Today I have come to West Dorset to the lovely little village of Cern Abbas. Cern Abbas is home to probably one of the most famous and maybe the rudest chalk hill figures in the UK. So let's go and take a look. The perfect spring day. This is a free car park, which is the viewpoint. And as you can see, there's some um, information boards here provided by the National Trust, who now manage the Cyan Giant. What a beautiful spot. Stunning. So what do we know about the sand giant? There's a lot that we still don't know, which is what makes it so interesting. But there are some facts that we do know. So he is 180 foot tall and 150 foot wide. He's holding a club, which is 120 foot long as well. And his all important manhood <laughs> is 36 foot long. So he's a big chap. So he's made of chalk trenches and the trenches he's covered in sheep at the moment by the way if you're just wondering why he's all dotty <laughs> so the trenches are four or five foot wide and two foot deep and they're filled with crushed chalk now every 25 years or so the national trust rechalk him to keep him nice and bright where he stands is also interesting he stands upon an iron age earthwork which is known as the trendle in its own right, that's also um, a place of interest. There he is. So who is he though and how old is he? Well, no one still really knows. And that's the most interesting thing about him really, that he is a mystery. What we do know is that there's no mention of him in any sort of written texts until 1694, where he appears in a local um, church warden's account. And it's documented here that for his upkeep, there was um, a charge of 3S, which I assume is shillings, but I don't know for sure. So yeah, so that's when we first see him written down, as it were, nothing prior to 1694. But there's lots of evidence to say he could be older than that. So he could be uh, a Roman dedication to the god Hercules. He often um, was depicted carrying a club. Or more likely, and I know that there's some archaeological evidence in 2021, they're still obviously having a look here today, even today, um, to suggest that he may be pagan, Anglo-Saxon. Maybe he's a depiction of the pagans themselves. Or maybe he's a depiction of one of their gods. They have um, mentioned maybe, I think he's called Heleth. I think he's a fertility god to the Anglo-Saxons. Could be some kind of him. So another theory is um, that he was uh, carved by the club raisers. They were a group of hardy Dorset men who patrolled the crops and fields um, during the civil wars in this area. Um, in an attempt to stop soldiers from stealing or damaging their crops. Um, armed only with clubs though, but they were successful in, in their endeavours at protecting their territories. So maybe it was a, a warning to approaching soldiers that the club raisers patrolled these lands.
Or was he created by Dorchester MP Denzel Holes, who owned land here in Cern Abbas circa 1641? It's proposed that he may have got it carved as a, a, a satirical parody of potentially Oliver Cromwell. So, so many theories, so, so many theories. And there's also lots of folklore as well, which we'll get into next. So folklore, of course, plays a large part in the story of the giant um, here at CERN. So one um, piece of folklore or legend is that um, he's a fertility symbol, again, pointing to him being pagan, potentially. And it was thought that couples that were looking to conceive a baby would do so if they did the deed here up on the uh, on the giant himself, particularly obviously around his 36 foot long manhood. <laughs> I don't know how else to wear that then. <laughs> so um, yeah, so that's one piece of folklore, whether people still roll around upon, upon the giant, well, who knows. And another piece of folklore or local legend is that he um, depicts or marks the spot where a giant actually fell. The legend is there was a giant that came here and um, killed a field of sheep. And the locals were absolutely enraged. So once the uh, giant had feasted on his mutton and fell, he fell asleep here on the uh, hill and the uh, local people took that as their chance to ambush him and they bound him and killed him where he slept. I kind of like that one. That's pretty cool. Yeah, still a mystery. Still a mystery. But yeah, that's the CERN Abbas giant. Look at these cuties. Oh, you're beautiful. Oh, they're so sweet. Enjoying the spring sunshine there. Okay, so I've walked this path here, which runs along the viewpoint car park. I'm going to head down, hopefully, if my uh, sense of direction is good today, towards the um, centre of CERN. Got some bluebells down there. Everything's so green. It's fairly accessible, as you can see. It's a little bit muddy, but we have yesterday it rained all day. Um, oh, this is a little picnic spot. Oh, that's cute. Ah, oh, that's lovely. Play area, and there's a car park down here as well. I think this is the actual official um, National Trust car park. It's free though. I think it's all free here like. So it looks like they've put a flag up on the um, next to the CERN giant, probably, um, I would think, for the King's coronation, which happened yesterday. So I think that's like a little uh, Union Jack up there that they've put next to the giant, but that's not normally there. It's a handy map and info board here, just outside the main car park. Okay, let's try and find my way. <laughs> what have we got here? Uh, village hall. Oh, this is pretty. Look at this, isn't that lovely? So I found the muddy path. As I always do, 
However, I've just come up onto this bank. So yeah, accessible to a point, but it seems to be getting a little less accessible. The further I go down this track, you need a good pair of boots. Okay, village centre I'm headed towards. Whoop. Oh, the water is lovely. Beautiful. Beautiful stone wall. I know it's a bit random, beautiful wall, but I just love a <laughs> love an old flint and stone wall. Look at that. I believe that's part of the uh, the old abbey there. We'll find out in a minute. And there is a beautiful weeping willow here. Some music, I can hear music. There are things going on today because the uh, King was, King Charles III had his coronation yesterday. So there are likely to be some local street parties and things. today but I expect that's because they're having a celebration here for the coronation but yeah unfortunately you can't go in unless the gates are open but look at this stunning what have we got through here oh we're in the churchyard goes to the back to the giant and that way goes to St Augustine's well which we're going to go and explore in a minute. I just saw some information here about St Augustine's well, uh, some folklore. I have got, I have read some of this myself in the books but Legend says that St Augustine once visited Cern Abbas and while he met some shepherds lending their sheep and asked them whether they would prefer beer or water to drink, to which the shepherds replied that they would prefer water. St Augustine then struck the ground with his staff and as the waters flowed from the ground he cried, Cern El, which meant I perceive God, but was also a pun on the word Cern El or Holy Corner, which is where the village name come from. But it says it's thought that the above legend was invented by the Benedictine monks of Cern Abbey to serve as an added attraction for pilgrims. Hmm. Let's go and have a look. It's funny how uh, the stories are different <laughs> according to whatever you read, and I've obviously read some different sources some different texts um, some local books that I've got and that story there seems to come from a, a Christian viewpoint of the monks and the ones I've read are more of a pagan perspective shall we say this is lovely what a beautiful day to be out apologise if there's wind noise there is a uh, a gentle spring breeze today. It's just so beautiful. 
I'm an animal. Oh, hey, that's a squirrel. So many bluebells. Wow, and look how lush and green everything is looking. The churchyard wraps around there. Beautiful. Here it is, St Augustine's Well. Absolutely beautiful. And we've got a few um, cluties tied to the trees, like at Knowlton here. Thankfully not too many, because I do find that if there's too many and they're not biodegradable, then they're more harm than good. Look at this. So the uh, folklore I heard about um, St Augustine's well, or red I should say, is that um, St Augustine indeed came here. He was a missionary sent by um, Pope Gregory to convert a particularly stubborn <laughs> load of pagans to down here in Dorset because you know we're tough we don't want to go with the new gods and the new or god and the new ways the new religion so they sent St. Sent St. Augustine down here and um, basically to convince the pagans that in the power of the one true god he struck the ground here in front of them and showed them the spring. It formed the spring from his staff. And then uh, he used the water that came through to baptise those pagans into Christians. Not very nice, is it? <laughs> but as a pagan myself, I'm proud that we were one of the last... counties to um, to give in as it were there's real heavy Bridget energies here it's absolutely lovely for those that know the goddess Bridget beautiful There's a little stone seat. Well, it's not little, it's quite a big stone seat. And I'm sat on that at the moment, just having a moment with, with myself and, yeah, with my spirituality. Absolutely beautiful. I am going to gently touch the waters in a minute, but I'm not going to film that because I might fall in. Or at least my phone. <laughs> Okay, so I'm leaving the well now, the spring. But I will be back. I think that's a real special place. Good vibes, man. Okay, I'm just gonna tilt around here because there's people using the church. And I don't want to film people that are seeking privacy. Okay, so there's the well down there. Hail Bridget. Got to say that, but there we are. I've just done it. <laughs> oh, look at this! So, those that know me know that I love the paranormal as well. And wow, this is just so gorgeous. <laughs> Sorry, it's taking my breath away. There are ghost stories here. Um, look at those bluebells particularly around the abbey where um, ghostly monks are supposed to be seen at dawn um, walking around so 
heading to the edge. Shame we couldn't go in the abbey today, or the abbey grounds, because there's nothing left of the abbey. There's literally a gatehouse, and then it opens onto a field. This is stunning. I'm just going to take some photos here. you can hear that music. <laughs> How lovely. How very British. How very English. Just spotted this as well. It's a um, preaching cross. Circa 1500s. surreal but beautiful <laughs> right I'm gonna leave the churchyard now so we've got a beautiful church there but being Sunday they may well be in service so we won't go any in there today but I did just want to look at this beautiful building here look at that it's stunning the pitch market it says wow So this is the other building I wanted to see, which is the new inn. Which is supposed to be very haunted. Oh look, I got too far. So it's supposed to be haunted by um, potentially an 18th century um, gentleman who sits by the fireplace. Apparently he seems to have his head bowed and then he stands up and then leaves um, down the same corridor each time. Now this at some point during its history used to be temporary courthouses so it's believed that maybe he's like reenacting or a re recreation um, of a memory of somebody that was called to trial. So that's quite interesting. And there's also supposed to be two young girls that are spotted playing in the gardens. Which I believe are at the back there, right down the end, if that's true. And they're dressed in summer attire, so they look very out of place in the winter months. But yeah, that's the new inn. There we are then guys, I've come full circle and I'm back now at the viewpoint and the car park. The sheep have moved off of the giant so hopefully you can see him slightly better. Um, this really is the best view you get of him so um, yeah I do recommend stopping at the viewpoint if you do want to come and have a look. You can walk around the earthworks uh, and the giant but this really is the only place where you'll see such a good picture of him. If you like the video please give it a thumbs up and a subscribe and a share, I'd really appreciate that. Uh, and if, leave a comment if you've got anything you'd like to um, share with me about your thoughts on the giant or where he came from. I'd be really interested to know. Thank you again. And take